Yeah. So uh, definitely, Dr. K. P. Chandra has already talked about the physiology, the the basic problem with obesity and how obesity is still underrated. So I'm going to talk about physiology of weight regulation. What are the etiopathogenesis and the benefit of weight loss and what is the concept of weight regain? So it is very simple to talk that intake and expenditure. We have to balance intake and expenditure. But intake is mainly dependent on hunger, satiety, and what absorption of various nutrition is going on in that particular person's body. At the same time, on the expenditure side, patient's metabolic rate, I would not say patients always, you can say person also, if patient is metabolically healthy, obese, but it's illusive thing because obesity is obesity. So person's metabolic rate, his or her thermogenesis, how much exercise metabolism is going on and need. So that is always we have to balance the food intake and the energy expenditure and energy expenditure is mainly dependent on two part that is basal metabolic rate, restrict metabolic rate and that is another form which is added to that is exercise matter. So once on the other side patient is taking food where on the other side patient is having resting metabolic rate. Now what is RMR? It is human refers to the energy required to sustain all essential physiological functions be it breathing, be it heart beating, be it just sitting and your brain is active and every small or big, less important or more important organs all are working and they are consuming energy. Top of that, that is thermogenesis, that is diet-induced thermogenesis. Now, what is diet-induced thermogenesis? It's a heat production in response to food that is amount of energy required to digest the particular thing. So for example, if you are eating protein, then protein will take more energy consumption in comparison to simple carbohydrate, which requires least um, energy consumption. Over the top, that is energy due to non-exercise activity thermogenesis, that is need, that is for routine uh, activity. Like just I am sitting in front of desktop, you all are sitting in front of desktop or your mobile, still our body is utilizing energy by thermogenesis. And plus when we are doing some structured exercise, structured exercise means repeated physical activity, commuting activity, some excessive household chores that all includes exercise. But here food is something which we are entering in our body in form of calorie and here that is divided by four and half of eight is resting metabolic rate. So resting metabolic rate is very important. DIT is small part, NEAT is even smaller part and exercise is another smaller part. So if patient is doing exercise but just other three things are not well taken care, then patient will not have that sufficient energy expenditure to lose weight. And that's why we need to deep down to see the various hormones, various signaling pathways which are or oxygenic or anorexigenic. On, on the level of hypothalamus, neuropeptide Y, arginine RP receptor, orexins, MCH, uh, that endocannabinoids and opioids are orexigenic. And from GIT, ghrelin is the orexigenic hormone. On the other side, leptin, insulin, amyling, polypeptide, and that is PP, and along with that CCK, GLP-1, PYY, oxytomodulin, androstatin, bombesin, and urogranulin, all are peripheral anorexigenic uh, signaling pathways. But in center, POMC, TRH, CRH, oxytocin, serotonin, and histamine are the important. So when patient is eating, patient is having some appetite, patient is having some peripheral signaling pathway to modulate appetite. And for that, hypothalamus is as in having arcuate nucleus where POMC and NPY, these two are uh, major part, where POMC give rise to apatogenic signal or anorexic signal by given by this NPY, arginine P. Now, PYY, PP, GRP1, oxytomodulin, all are satiety peptide which will stimulate POC, POMC and that will give negative feedback to NPY 
while ghrelin will stimulate the negative pathway or or oxygen pathway and leptin and insulin are having adipocyte signals and but here i will say insulin and leptin are bit different than simple or oxygenic and anorexigenic pathway that leptin as such is anorexigenic but leptin resistant produces adipocyte insulin is anorexigenic but insulin again produces adipocyte so these two hormones are very vital from periphery which also give some central signals and they are also stimulating this anorexigenic pathway and inhibiting anorex uh, anor i mean orexigenic pathway to have satiety to increase appetite or uh, to decrease appetite or to hunger to decrease appetite and along with that there is one center in the brain stem that is nucleus tractor solitarius and area prostrima where the role of vagal afferents as well as amyloidin gfp1 is having some role recently we have semaglutide which is having action on this area prostrima and amyloidin is also have found to have action on area prostrima so by now we were concentrating only more on this part but now we also come to know that these are the another area of brain stem which is also contributing to this and this all oxygenic and anorexigenic signaling pathways are also having some action on nucleus tractor solitarius and area postrema so this is very important that by doing this we have a change in the feeding pattern as we campaign as well as metabolic rate and both are interconnected with it. so if brain has to control it will control through homeostatic eating so patient will eat for hunger so if there is hunger patient will eat if patient is satiety uh, having satiety patient will not eat and for that these are the basic signaling pathway hedonic eating means eating for pleasure just patient is eating because his brain or her brain is stimulating that it is something good which i like eating even if it is not required and that is mainly controlled by dopamine and opioid and cannabidiol receptor and you can remember the previous drug which is now off market because of some serious side effect they were acting on this cannabinoid receptor like sibutramine and other drug and they were having control of this hedonic eating and there is a role of behavioral science by executing function that's deciding to eat so i am feeling that i am eating i want to eat but still brain is suggesting that this is not good for your body and i am not eating that is called behavioral science and that depends on thoughts feelings and the change in the behavior and that is the role of behavioral interventions and that's why not only diet not only medicine not only exercise works but behavioral interventions are also very important as far as oral etiopathogenesis is concerned i know that it is very easy to speak that energy intake and energy expenditures are there but there are role of multiple parts adipose tissue pancreas gut uh, there was one specific lecture on genetics and sometimes it is co prescription of other medication which are causing this problem and along with that environmental changes which is also one of the most prevailing aggravating factor for obesity along with hedonic input that we go on eating for our just pleasure so genetics are high heritability for body weight there are families who are having obesity as a part and their genes are in hypothalamus leptin melanocortin pathway i think genetics there was one specific lecture so i will not go down but you can see that is cns expression of hypothalamic control of energy intake there are 97 loci which are regulating total bmi and for genes for fat distribution there are 49 loci which are controlling expression of adipose tissue and these are associated with obesity and you can see there are more than 100 genes and genetic loci are associated with obesity but at the same time much more important role is going on with our environment where socio cultural factors traditions beliefs peer pressure i will say peer pressure and socio economic factors are one of the most important pathway driving this pandemic of obesity and food environment availability of inexpensive highly palatable food is also one of the contributing factors as far as complications are concerned i think dr kevin chandra has already 
elucidate the metabolic problem, multiple cancers, diabetes, thrombosis, gout, and CVD risk factor increment, mechanical in form of incontinence, arthritis, sleep apnea, and chronic back pain, and mental that is depression and anxiety, which are going. So we need to control weight, we need to reduce obesity. Then what are the benefits of reducing weight? If person is losing weight by 5 to 10 percent, every time we are talking about drugs, just there was one lecture on medical nutrition therapy, there was one lecture on medications in obesity. Each and every medication were accepted for anti-obesity medicine only if they show reduction of weight by 5 to 10 percent. Why? Because if you reduce weight by 5 to 10 percent, there is reduction in risk of type 2 diabetes, reduction in CV mortality, there is improvement in lipid profile, reduction in blood pressure, especially systolic BP, reduction in OSA symptoms, and health related change and improvement in quality of life. And you can see that if you now there is a time we are talking about diabetes remission. Though it is uh, wrongly called as reversal, it is nothing like reversal, it is more of a remission that is pharmacological remission, which we can achieve if we achieve 10 to 15 percent of weight loss. And if we achieve more than 15 percent, like bariatric surgery, you will get the maximum benefit. Dyslipidemia, hypertension, NFLE all needs around 10 to 15 percent of weight loss. So, and arthritis, psoriasis, GRD, PCOS all require 8 to 10 percent of weight loss, including asthma also. So this suggests that the basic weight loss we should aiming is more than 5% and possibly more than 10%, then we can reduce weight related complication. But the other side of this truth is the fact that we can reduce this significantly. We can have a person achieving this magic figure of more than 10% of weight loss with either medication, with a medical nutrition therapy, bariatric surgery, many other options, but to sustain it is very difficult. You can see this number of studies every time when patient was in studies, they were losing. But as soon as study was over, actually they end up after four or five years to a higher level than what they started. And that is the problem with all these studies. So factor reducing, I mean, if there are reducing energy expenditure, fat oxidation, thyroid hormone reduction, increase in cortisol, that all will cause increased energy storage. On the other side, there are factors which will have uh, various signaling pathway which will increase food intake. And that happens after diet-induced weight loss. So these are limiting the benefit of weight loss due to diet or even sometimes with structural exercise after some time. That is called metabolic adaptation. Adaptation that resist weight loss is due to hormonal changes, decrease in satiety hormone and increase in hunger hormone because body wants to reach to that set point and reduction in overall energy expenditure. This is one study, uh, study done in 16 participants who had participated in the biggest loser reality show where they have been there for 30 weeks and they were followed for next six years and the inclusion criteria was they have significant weight loss during biggest research study. And we were seeing for the primary objective of resting energy expenditure, metabolic adaptation calculated as per the difference between the measured RRE. And what was the result? Body weight reduced by 58 kg during this bigger, uh, biggest losing study or maybe a show, they regained 41 kg in next six years. Resting metabolic rate, which was reduced by 610 kilocalorie per day, which was almost plateaued and reduced for a longer period of time. And the metabolic adaptation was almost 499 kilocalorie per day. So exactly it is regaining to the primary level. So energy balance is regulated by the body and specifically brain through various sources of input. That depends on energy intake, energy expenditure, including adipose tissue, pancreas, gut, genetics and medication, and environment. Brain is one of the vital organs to control all these things. And it controls homeostatic eating, hedonic eating, and execution of function. And that's a behavioral change is also very important part. And adaptation to the resistance to the weight loss are very important thing and a challenging thing during the journey of an obesity patient 
to losing weight and to reaching to a plateau and then maintaining rather than uh, regaining that. So thank you.